Hey healthy bunnies, hope you guys are doing well. I am so excited to be making another video. I listened to your requests, I did a little voting on Google Plus about a month ago and I asked what do you want to see? And the most popular topics were DIY and meal prep. I thought I would tackle meal prep first because we're getting close to summer and I know so many people are a lot more focused on getting in shape because they're gonna be in hopefully bikinis and swim trunks and just enjoying the warm weather. So that's what I'll be doing. Some tips on meal prepping. Definitely want to get some good meal prep containers. That's super helpful because you'll probably be making enough meals for um, half of the week or the whole week. You definitely want to portion it out into containers. That's part of the benefit of meal prepping is that it helps with portion control. So speaking to that, the next thing you might need is a food scale. I have one that was only about $14 on Amazon. Really inexpensive and it's super helpful for measuring out some of those higher calorie, higher carb things like maybe if you're having and quinoa or rice or pasta that's something you want to measure out versus if you're making like a veggie like a butternut squash or broccoli or asparagus uh, the measurements are not as important another one that's important is measuring your protein so typically about three ounces per meal is pretty beneficial another thing you want to keep in mind with your meal prepping is that um, you definitely want to make sure the food has cooled down completely before you put it into containers. Otherwise, it'll steam up uh, the container and actually cause the food to spoil a little faster. So let everything come to room temperature before putting it into the fridge. I usually um, just put everything in kind of a row and I'll put the lid kind of halfway off and let it ventilate on its own. And while I'm cleaning up the kitchen and such, the food is cooling down and by the time I'm done cleaning the kitchen, it's ready to go into the fridge. Another tip on meal prepping is to plan ahead. So I usually do my grocery shopping a day or two before I meal prep just because grocery shopping can be a little bit time consuming. And for some reason, the day that I grocery stop shop, I just, I don't really want to cook that day. So I ordered my groceries on with Amazon Prime. So I ordered them online and they were delivered yesterday. And then today I went to the grocery store just to pick up two more things that I wasn't able to get online. So not too taxing. So I will feel ready to go in a couple of hours. Um, you also want to plan ahead for the day that you cook. Um, mine is typically Sundays, but I don't cook for the whole week. I cook for about half the week. So I end up cooking again on either Wednesday or Thursday. And if it happens to be my Friday off, then I kind of just go with the flow and towards the end of the week I end up eating like salads or even having like smoothie for a meal. Um, I just kind of keep it low key and I don't put too much pressure on myself because they know that I have that Friday off and I can sort of pick up where I left off. So that's kind of how I do it but it may be different for you if you have a spouse or if you have a family or if you're meal prepping with a roommate then you might need a little bit more structure if there's someone else depending on you for meals. Another tip for meal prepping is to get some recipes, some new recipes, because I know for me, sometimes uh, maybe just being a food blogger, um, I kind of have some favorite recipes that I sort of default to, but it's really good to just go online and search out some newer recipes so that you have something to be excited about. For me, I never have a problem prepping the meals, but sometimes I have a problem eating them. So getting a new and exciting and yummy recipe that I'm excited to eat makes me more likely to go in the fridge when it's lunchtime at work and actually eat instead of saying, you know what, I don't really want to eat that. I think I'll eat out because then I'm kind of wasting money and at that point I'm also probably going to um, be having a higher calorie, higher fat meal too depending on where it is I choose to go out to eat. So make something that you can be excited about. Okay, now here's some tips if the meal you make doesn't come out the way you really want it to. I know we've all had this happen. I, you know, cook for, for part, you know, for a living, but yet I sometimes still mess up. So there are three things that I use that really step my meals up. First one is sriracha. Can't go wrong with hot sauce. I, especially if it's a stir fry and it came out kind of bland. Um, the next one is Bragg's Aminos, which is basically a substitute for soy sauce, but it's gluten-free, a little bit healthier and organic. Um, putting that on like veggies or protein or whatever gives it a lot more flavor, adds some saltiness to it. The last one is avocado. You cannot go wrong adding avocado and it can even go on some things that you wouldn't even expect, even like a baked potato. Um, it definitely goes great on salads. It goes great on a lot of different things for breakfast. So I always have some avocado on hand just to like make my meal more exciting and more flavorful. And if you're not super duper into avocado, a tip for that is to add a little bit of sea salt, lemon or lime juice, 
and if you want to go up even more of a notch, you want to go with some smoked paprika. So those three things are like my fail safes for when my meals don't come out well, but at the same time, I don't want to be wasteful and like throw it away. So that's it for my meal prep tips. We're going to get into the meal prepping. As I'm going through this series, I would love your tips and suggestions for the next thing that I should make. I really want to make this about you guys, so I want to show you guys what it is you want to see. So if there's something you've been dying to learn how to make, let me know. Even if I don't know how to make it, I'll figure it out and we can learn together. So if you like following me on YouTube, make sure you follow me on Snapchat. I share there every single day. Sometimes I do a quick little cooking show where I show um, what I'm making for dinner, what I'm having for lunch. It's a lot more interactive and a lot more informal. Thank you bunnies and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.